Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman and uh, my buddy Pastor Richard's back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. Yeah. You too. We we're just talking about the snow and uh we, we were we were spared here in North Dakota, at least in Mina. I should say in Mina. We were spared. And so yeah, it's unlike last year. I think we had like 20 inches of snow is mm-hmm. yeah, the, the week of Easter and all that. So uh it's nice. Nice not to have that be moving Absolutely. slow in the morning. I remember an Easter vigil where um, we we had probably at least a foot of snow, the heavy snow, and uh, I was trying to to snow blow it out, and it was it was jamming up the snow blower, and uh, one of the elders was going to try and bring his because it was a little bigger, and and his daughter went off the road, and everybody was fine, but it was just one of those where like it's supposed to be spring, it's really easy to hide eggs now, you just drop white eggs in the snow, and nobody finds yeah. them, <laughs> and then everything's fine. Um, oh well, we made it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, that time of year. Right. And so, uh, well, you know, East Easter is this week when we're recording and then, uh, summer's right around the corner. The, um, the, the sun will come out and melt everything off and, uh, yeah, it's a good, good feeling when that happens. Looking forward to it deeply. So, uh, yeah, we, we're recording this in Holy Week, uh, but Easter, by the time you're listening to this, will have come and uh, settled in. And it might sort of be worth noting that that's okay. They're, they're connected. Uh, we were talking before we started recording about just sort of the importance of of Good Friday, if you actually want to, want to understand Easter, right? Yeah, yeah. I, You know, it, this whole idea of, uh, you know, Good Friday, there's a temptation, I think, in America – um, to go from Palm Sunday right and take a deadbolt or a bypass, if you will, a bypass around Good Friday straight to Easter Sunday. And not that we want to negate Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday is good. Um, but I would say we understand it even better. Or it's, it's, it, can we say it's even gooder, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's even better. It's even better when you understand in the context of Good Friday and, and, uh, uh, to have a bloody bloody savior on Good Friday and then a resurrected Christ, a resurrected savior on Sunday is is, gosh, it just it just it just it gives a fuller picture, if you will. And so, yeah, I know there's a theologian once upon a time he said that you cannot understand Resurrection Sunday apart from Good Friday. In fact, the whole Christian life uh, has to be understood through the lens of the cross and never apart from it. And so, things such as creation and uh, resurrection, uh, even the second coming all need to be filtered through that understanding of the good Friday, what happened that day that, that our savior bled and died. Right. It's, it's, it's not even just sort of the surface level stuff. Like if you think about it, Jesus walking around on Sunday is, is mildly more impressive if you know that he died on Friday. And if you don't know that he died on Friday, him walking around on Sunday is not a big deal. Um, But it's that you think about how it is that he comes to conquer death. Um, if the idea of Christianity is only the victory and and never the suffering that leads to it, uh, you're going to have a bad time because in this world, uh, we recognize that our baptism unites us to Jesus' death and his resurrection, not just his resurrection. There's going to be trials. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be crosses. And if your understanding of Easter is simply, well, uh, everything is okay and everything will always be okay, what happens when it's not? Right. Right. Well, and, and this is the whole idea that that what happens at that suffering, that suffering, uh, the shed blood, right? The shed blood, the suffering is a necessity for humankind uh, that he does in our stead and on our behalf uh, for the sake of, of sin, uh, death, the devil. I mean, so when he's on the cross, you know, bleeding and dying on that cross, he says those famous words, um, it is finished, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we hear in the Greek, it's kind of a fun little word, uh, tetelestai, right? It's a fun, fun word to say. And it means it is finished. Well, what is the it? What is finished? Well, we would conclude that that death is finished. Uh, mm-hmm. Sin is finished. The condemnation of sin. Uh, the evil one, the devil himself is finished. The wrath of God uh, towards our sin is finished. All these things are fully encompassed. They all funnel down. So if you think of a big funnel, everything funnels down to what? To Good Friday. It all comes to climax at that Good Friday. Uh, we think of the book of Mark too, as well as the uh, the, the Roman centurion who looks, he says, truly, the, truly, this is the son of God. And he says mm-hmm. that as that savior, what? His blood and died and looking at that cross. And so it, it all funnels down to that Good Friday. And in a sense, you know, we would say that, that the resurrection on Sunday uh, not to negate it or diminish it by any means, but it is it is the icing on the cake. It's the it's the uh, uh, it's it's showing the proof that that what happened on Good Friday worked, that it was legit. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, if we would have had a dead savior come Sunday morning, uh, Resurrection Sunday, if we still have a dead savior, then okay, well, 
then then oh, so what right, right. Um, but the very fact that we have a resurrected savior that actually uh, bleeds back or not bleeds back but but validates and points back to everything that happened on that good friday and so again yeah the, this idea of 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 good friday uh the suffering uh the bleeding the dying uh the putting to death of 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 sin and and the conquering of the devil and all that is all encompassing and so again you, we can't understand resurrection apart from the crucifixion and so this christian life is seen not only through the resurrection but through the cross as well right there's this this thing that that we always try and do and sort of parse the the passion of our lord and so here's the death part and we'll leave that over there because that's finished and now here's the resurrection part and this is all we have to look forward to but it's always the death and resurrection of jesus it's they, they can be uh, examined individually but they're always united and, and that matters because while the death is the means by which death is destroyed the resurrection is sort of it is the consequence of death being destroyed um and, and when we sort of mix these two things up we start looking for resurrection to be the means the, the thing that we just need to lean into so that we can get to something. Whereas in reality, it's the death of Jesus that accomplishes the destruction of death, the destruction of, of the, the power of the evil one, the forgiving of sin. And that's so that when we, we experience then death, we can say, all right, that's okay. There's a consequence coming now because of the, the cross. There will be a resurrection. Um, the, these two things can never sort of be left in their own camps. But at the same time, uh, we look to the, the cross as the thing that, that – uh, destroy death and and the resurrection is sort of the the seal uh the the demonstration uh the, it it's not apart from the death but but rather it, it's the thing that we get to look forward to because it's 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 Christ's now yeah so i mean we think of this this term right uh, sides of a two sides of the same coin right yeah. i mean so it's it's i think that's always helpful you know you have one coin and you have one side and the other and you you, you can't divorce the one side from the other uh they go together and so yeah i would say that uh, yeah how you stay there is, is really important. We don't we don't just take the coin and look at the resurrection and disregard the other side. I mean that's mm -hmm. that's foolishness, you know. And and if we look at the other side of the coin and we see the death of Christ, we also have to keep in mind that there's the reverse side, which is the resurrection. And so one coin, two sides. I mean, and this really goes to a lot of it goes to with a lot of things with this Christian faith that we have, uh, such as like we talk about long gospel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about. Uh, uh, the, the two the two mountains mount sinai and mount calvary uh we mm -hmm. talk about law and gospel uh we talk about life and death um we talk about the uh, cross and the resurrection um the mount calvary and the empty tomb uh, we we have to have all of it together but if you exclude one of them for the other then it doesn't make sense and yeah, our falls. theology becomes it falls apart it becomes unhinged and so forth and so uh, i mean it's like what paul talks about too in, in thessalonians right he talks about you know we grieve right but we don't grieve as people who don't have hope and so uh the reason why we have hope is because of the resurrection but we don't when somebody dies we don't say yay you know this is great we still we still have grief but then we don't just grieve and 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 and, and like pagans do we we grieve mm -hmm. with hope we have grief and hope at the same time and so i think this really points to this whole idea of of mount calvary and the empty tomb we embrace both um not exclusionary from each other but uh through both and embrace both and so yeah Christ is risen. He's risen he's indeed. Risen indeed. Hallelujah. Absolutely. And and he's risen from what? From the bloody yeah. cross itself, which he accomplished all good things. And so we yeah. embrace both. Absolutely. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us today. Yep. It's good to see you, Harrison. You too. Take care.